Hi there. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of an immune response to a potential pathogenic invader. As such, this video is exactly that, a brief summary of an immune response that may or may not happen to an invader. I'm going to ignore a lot of complexities and diversity in immune responses. After all, the immune system is one of the most complex systems that is always changing, ever evolving throughout your life to protect you from daily challenges. What I'm going to show you will be the cells involved, how they tie in together in order to eliminate a viral invader. Now the cells and the steps involved might be different if this invader was a bacterium, a protist, a larger multicellular organism, a fungal invader, but for our purpose we're going to focus on virus. So here we have a virus in the upper left corner shown in red. The first line of defense is part of the innate immune response and these are going to be physical barriers. Physical barriers will include things like stomach acid, the skin, sebum, sweat, and mucous membranes. Here, I'm showing you some pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium that you'd find in the mucous membranes of the upper respiratory tract. Now, for the purpose of this video, let's assume the viruses can squeak through that mucous membrane, and now they're in the bloodstream and surrounding tissue fluid. Next comes up the second barrier. The secondary barriers will involve interferon chemicals, complement proteins, and cells. Now I'm not going to focus on complement proteins primarily because complement is much more heavily involved in inflammatory responses and bacterial infections. I will touch on interferons and I'll touch on some of the cells of the secondary barriers of the, the innate immune response, but not all the cells. I'm going to focus on natural killer cells shown in green, labeled with NK, dendritic cells in light purple shown with a D, and the dark purple macrophages identified with an M. When the viruses come into the body, you'll have many viruses that have never infected a self cell yet. You will also get a bunch of viruses that will make their way down and infect self cells. These self cells will then do a few different things. These infected self cells will attempt to fight off that invading virus using lysosomes to degrade some viruses that are inside and they will then take fragments of the broken down degraded virus and plug them into their cell membrane as markers for being infected. These infected self cells can also produce things called interferons, which are cytokines or chemical signals, and they will be used by neighboring cells to put up some form of cellular defenses to prevent themselves from being infected by the virus. Unfortunately, the self cells that are infected, they're sort of a lost cause. They have to be destroyed in the viruses within them as well. And this is where natural killer cells will start to come in. Natural killer cells can identify the antigenic fragment on the cell membrane, bind and destroy that infected self cell by covering it in perforin and other enzymes that will destroy the proteins and poke holes in that infected self cell and the viruses will be released and phagocytized by macrophages. Now for the purpose of this video we're going to assume that the natural killer cells do not eliminate all the infected self cells. They can't keep up with viral replication. You also have a bunch of viruses that are free and in the bloodstream that have not infected self cells yet. This is going to be where macrophages can come in, phagocytize the virus, 
dendritic cells can come in to phagocytize the virus. And once the viruses are inside the dendritic cells and macrophages, they will fuse with lysosomes, be broken down into small pieces, and then the fragments or antigens from the virus will be plugged into special proteins on the cell membrane of dendritic cells and macrophages, which can then be used to activate other immune cells, which will be the focus of the next part of this video. But again, for the sake of this video, we're going to assume that the macrophages and dendritic cells do not phagocytize all the viruses in the bloodstream. So what you have is you have hundreds, thousands, who knows how many viruses that are bursting out of infected self cells. And now you have all those. You also have the viruses that have never been phagocytized and they're also still there. And the viruses will attempt to invade and affect and kill other self cells, which obviously your body does not want. So this is gonna be where the adaptive immune response comes into play. Shown here with the orange B cells, the helper T cells shown in blue, and sort of toxic T cells shown in more of a light blue. So first we'll start with B cells. B cells will have B cell receptors, which are really nothing more than membrane bound antibodies that can identify and bind to the specific virus. Once they bind to that specific virus, it turns that B cell on. The B cell will then become a plasma cell, and that plasma cell can then produce lots of antibodies, which can then go and theoretically bind to these viruses. And once those viruses are bound by the antibodies, they will be phagocytized by macrophages and destroyed. Now this is one way that you can activate a B cell and allow them to develop antibodies to this virus. This is independent of a helper T cell, meaning it does not require helper T cell activation. Now, the downside of this, while it can be relatively quick, you don't get as strong of a response compared to if you use a helper T cell. You also don't get memory B cells. So next time this virus comes into your body, the response is just as strong, takes just as long, nothing's changed. So this is gonna be where helper T cells are gonna be really important and will be the focus of the rest of this video. What you will see with helper T cells is that they actually will mediate, maximize an adaptive immune response. They will play a role in activating various immune cells, amplifying the responses of various immune cells. They basically guide and again, maximize an immune response. Without helper T cells, even the weakest Pathogenic invader can cause death. So let's focus on helper T cells shown in the darker blue and labeled with the TH. To activate helper T cells, you will need antigen presenting cells. Antigen presenting cells like these dendritic cells in light purple or macrophages shown in dark purple. They are called antigen presenting cells because they take the antigenic fragments shown here, 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 and here, and they will be recognized by T cell receptors as foreign, and that will be part of what turns on this helper T cell. We're gonna focus primarily on dendritic cells because they are the most potent and most efficient antigen presenting cells. And we'll say that this dendritic cell with its antigenic fragments shown in red will go and activate and turn on this helper T cell. 
this helper T cell, when activated and turned on, thanks to this antigen presenting cell and some co-stimulation, can then go and do multitude of different things. The first thing that it can do is it can go down and activate B cells. This is T helper cell activation of B cells. And it's gonna be different compared to what I briefly just went through already, which in, does not involve helper T cells. Once you involve helper T cells and you activate those B cells, you will get something called clonal selection whereby you will get thousands of clones of that exact B cell that is specific for that virus. And these B cells are activated. And once they are activated, they will all produce antibodies. And these antibodies can then go and clump bind, neutralize any of these free viruses that have not infected a self cell. Not only do you get thousands of B cell clones with a huge antibody response, but you can also get memory B cells. And these memory B cells will be set aside later in case you get exposed again to this exact virus. And therefore, the response will be stronger and faster. And you may not even ever get symptoms to this viral invader. So that's gonna be a key thing there. You will actually get memory B cells. So that's one thing that helper T cells will do. The other thing that helper T cells will do is it will go and activate cytotoxic T cells. When they activate cytotoxic T cells, you will get a very similar response to what we just shown with B cells. And that is you will get clonal selection. You will get thousands of copies of that specific cytotoxic T cell that is specific to that virus. And then those cytotoxic T cells can then go and target infected self cells. And kill them. And just like what you saw with the B cells, you will also get memory cytotoxic T cells. That way, again, if you get exposed again, the response is faster and stronger. So what you can see here with these B cell activation through helper T cells and cytotoxic T cell activation is that you are creating these huge armies of immune cells that are specific to that one antigen on that virus and there's nowhere that that virus can hide. If the virus tries to hide inside cells, cytotoxic T cells will identify those infected cells and kill the virus in the cell itself. If the virus has not infected a self cell yet, then you have the thousands of B cells with their antibodies to bind, clump, and help destroy the viruses that are freely floating in the bloodstream. Again, there's nowhere that that virus can hide. Now, not only will helper T cells activate B cells and cytotoxic T cells and induce the creation of memory cells and clonal selection, these helper T cells can also come back and feed on themselves and actually activate even more helper T cells. 
And what you get, you get clonal selection and you get thousands of copies of those helper T cells that are specific for that virus, which can then go and activate even more B cells and activate even more cytotoxic T cells. And just like with cytotoxic T cells and B cells that have been activated by helper T cells, you will get a bunch of memory helper T cells as well. That way you get subsequently exposed and your response will be faster and stronger than before. Now we're not done yet with helper T cells. Helper T cells will also go and bind to macrophages and make them even more phagocytic. They make them even more mobile and more voracious killers of viruses that have not infected self cells yet. So in essence, what we just went through here was a virus that invaded your body passing through the first line of defense of the innate immune response shown in yellow. In this case, a mucous membrane. It invaded and managed to successfully replicate and survive despite natural killer cells destroying infected self cells and macrophages and dendritic cells phagocytizing free viruses. But then at that point, they encountered something they could not deal with. The activation of helper T cells, activation and clonal selection of B cells, activation and clonal selection of cytotoxic T cells, and a maximal adaptive immune response, which ultimately ends up destroying all the virus that has gotten into your body.